It's, um, yeah, the jaw just cuts in a little slightly steeper angle than, than I painted it. And actually the cheek is coming round. Um, well, it's closer maybe. You'll notice I'm not putting anything else on my brush. I'm just using what's there now for a bit. And trying to just model it. to just do this with the glaze I'm gonna you know there's quite a firm uh, line that um, describes her eyelid it's quite high up as well so I might have to do that after something will be easier when it's dry this so it's not too dark. I don't want to remove it entirely but it's okay. It's just a dimple. And yeah this definitely cuts in. A shadow, a shadow just on her neck. Got a little bit more paint. I'm just going to try and do this area. So he describes it's very, very loose when Rubens painted it here. And just got the highlights. So I've got some very very white bits now. Well, if you look at the original, it's it's fairly rough there actually. I think it's um, yeah, she's having, she has a very pronounced cheekbone. So this is between the hair. So you got some hair just there, going round, and then. Hmm, somewhere around there anyway. So we can go over that later on. And then actually... sort of the line of her collar, something like that. And you can just see the very sketchy brushwork that Rubens himself used. I've got a slightly larger brush and um, he's, he's probably used a bit of white over a black glaze, black for the background. Honestly, I'll, um, well, yeah, there will be lots, there'll be a couple more glazes over this, so I'm not sure if it's ne necessarily the correct order. Right, um, I've got a big old brush here. Just 
just to, to make sense of this. Could put some black in, that's quite, I don't like this brush anymore. I'm going to bin that, just the end of you. Still, if I'm putting a lot on, I'm always having adding a little bit of medium. I mean, it's a bit premature, isn't it? But I can't help myself. Well, we're at it. Then I can just think about the hair. There's that might help the likeness a bit. be able to see lots of um, things that I'm not getting quite right when you look at when you see the original next to it as I work I'm not sort of doing it in a sight size way I've just got it on my iPad but I don't know, maybe ideally I need a just a picture there I'm going to glaze over this It's got an interesting quality, the paint, uh, as Rubens has painted it on. It's very, it seems very thin, you know, lots of medium. I'm not sure what brush it is. I'd, I'd imagine it's like, a, uh, you know, it could be a sable, but it could be a hog's hair that, you know, people used to soak hog's hair brushes in, uh, in water for the, a couple of days. I just learned that from, I was looking at some very interesting videos by a man called Tom Keating, who... Uh, he was working I think in the 80s and he was a British uh, academic painter, restorer, possibly forger and uh, anyway he was just uh, part of a, ser a series of programs he made where he copied um, various painters, it was called, um, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called actually now, Tom Keating on painting or something like that on painters and I don't think he quite got the um, impressionists uh, right, but um, his, his one on Titian is really, really interesting. But he was taught, he he does mention that uh, you know a cheap way to create your own sable brush is to get a hog's hair and then just and soak it in water, and that's something he said the ancients understood, and you can get you can save a lot of money um, and get the equivalent. So you can see that uh, the net, when this is dry, I'll just easily be able to go over this, um, you know, with another glaze, and just it'll just be pretty much done. I imagine that Rubens would have done maybe a couple of glazes. So you're going to have this layer, the underpainting, and you know maybe one or two, maybe one, and then just one to finish. But it would have been pretty much resolved.
It's just pure raw umber going on. No medium or anything. It's medium on the surface, remember. Now I'm aware the eyes aren't right yet. I'm aware of that. Oh gosh, I've got a cat here. Oh no, cat! Cat, go away. Here, just come in. Come here, boo boo. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, darling. I'm going to do it so that I'm well, just trying to leave it on there really. I'll probably do all of this off camera, it's just it's not, it's not too much to it. I feel sorry for the cat. I'm getting a bit lazy now I'm not really looking so I'm, I think that's the worst thing with painting is that uh, you just uh, I don't know if it's just a bit of boredom or something but you know when you just sort of take your eye off the ball and then suddenly start making it up and then um, before you know it it's all gone catastrophically wrong so now in the same way that I use the white to go over the um, Umber, I'm going back over the white, modelling in. So there's not too much on the brush, it's just very soft. This, the, the canvas is my palette. And that's, see, yeah, I don't know what that does. Hang on. Ooh, it looks like she's got a moustache. I'm just going to soften some of these transitions a little bit. And I can definitely do this with glazing as well. And now, when, so I've picked up a little bit of white. I'm sort of taking it off here too. But, um, Coming ever so slightly milky. It's quite a lot of medium, maybe too much medium. I mean, it's a really fantastic painting to do originally without any um, photography or anything. It's just 
a brilliant, brilliant painter. So I've got this shadow around, I don't know what's going to happen with my brush, just try it, so it's just the shadow around her nose. And it's interesting because I've just blocked it in, but there are transitions within this. Even though I've got umber, I'm going to use it just to draw. No, that's not working. That goes up ever so slightly. I think it's crucial to the expression is just trying to capture these dimples. Because suddenly having done this one just created that little bit of shadow. Um, she's smiling again. At the moment it's just the imprimatura showing on her bottom lip so even though this is my white brush I'm still using it just to move some of the burnt umber of the raw umber sorry around Yeah, this needs a very steady hand and probably a bit later on. Um, okay, so too much paint on the brush, so just get rid of that. Bear in mind that you know this might appear it will be crude, but then um, I'll be able to just soften all of this and go over it and make it really like porcelain, just with with a just one glaze actually, one glaze with a flat sable brush. See, well there you go. So there was sort of there wasn't enough paint, and so suddenly it starts to pull it off. It's a very, very fine balance. It's 
this um, this is a slightly quizzical expression. Very, very difficult. Hmm. Maybe that's okay. Just go smaller brush. It's, that's something I'll do later because I think you know obviously she's got it's the roundness of her of the of, uh, irises she's got sort of that arching eyelid and um, that's really what gives her so much personality And I'm not going to worry too much in this video um, because I could spend a long time modelling it. I think um, anyway, yeah. So what I, what I mean is, I'm not going to get too bogged down in the modelling because that could go on and on for ages. Uh, looking as I said about you know Michelangelo's entombment. I think the only way he's managed to sort of create that is to just spend ages. So it's, it won't be that watchable, but I can just sort of what I'm doing is just getting a feel for the scent, you know, the sense of the form of the face, and uh, and you know the architecture of the face and the cheekbone, the jawline, uh, the these dimples that she has, you know, her forehead, and then um. You know, I can come back to it and I can just make all of this more subtle. In theory, uh, you know, you could, there could be quite a few layers to this underpainting. Oh, too much, too much. So an area like this where you know I've got to do something about the modeling and the transition around here it's uh, it's a worry you don't want to I don't want to because I think it's the drawing sort of okay so I'm just I'm reticent to do it I don't want to ruin it so that is a classic example of somewhere that I can attend to when it's dry with a, with another glaze A bit too pronounced, so just um. so these lids somehow meet. Oh dear. Okay. 
don't do that. Likewise, you know, if I want to create this line on her of her lid, um, then um, I'm just going to have to wait. And I'm sure Rubens himself would have just waited until the paint's dry, and then he can just go over it um, fairly in a very easy way with a sable brush. It's not easy, uh, straightforward, simple, but that's not easy at all. What I mean about you just don't want to muck up the drawing too you've got to be very careful you're going to get straight down the brush shop it felt quite dark so just pulling off a bit of the paint. And then conversely putting it back on there. Just sort of just goes in the jaw, just curls in just slightly before becoming the chin, going into the chin. And there's all this shadow area, which is it's actually the chin itself and underneath going into her neck. Starts over there. Maybe I'll just use this bigger brush. Hard to honestly see the line of her ear, but that's sort of enough. Just giving it a glaze ready here. Make it a bit darker. Oh, well, I'll wait until the next glaze for that. cheekbone and honestly I'm not sure I can see the top of the ear which is no higher than her lower lid or sort of there and I don't know if there's a curl of hair either way there's some kind of line there I feel that even though the um, the eyes are sort of fairly sketched out, I quite per I personally I quite like that quality. It's just that would be my sort of an inverted commas style. Um, 
but uh, you know then basically the foundations there and when it's dry then I can go over and start to sort of sharpen some of the shadows and things like that and I've just noticed one thing I'll just get rid of some of that paint just here this is all it's not nowhere near as dark as that in the picture. It's definitely defined. Maybe I'll just I can just leave the imprimatura and then just the sort of tip of her nose is quite light. And that isn't as dark either, so... Very, very careful not to mess up the drawing. That's actually not that far down, so I'm just going to lift it. Um, Careful that every all the whites I'm putting on is it's never it's not pure white. So she's got she does have this slightly quizzical expression here and you can just see how she's where she just tenses her eyebrows with that there's just the muscles just showing here just ever so slightly just very I mean it's so beautifully observed it's just absolutely amazing As, uh, when I was watching uh, this video by uh, Tom Keating uh, on um, on YouTube, you should look him up. It's uh, the, he just said at the end of his one on Titian, you know, it took Titian, you know, months to uh, come up. He came up with the concept, he designed the painting, and it's very easy just to sort of copy it. It's a completely different sort of process. We do learn a lot doing it, but um, it's just sort of um, you don't want to sort of be disrespectful really of these artists because uh, it just it's just such a phenomenal thing to come up with the concept initially and just do this especially as I said without photography Personally, this is what I love above all. Uh, it's just when uh, there's just the right amount of paint on the surface, and I can just take a brush with hardly any paint on and just move the paint that's already there around and model those model the forms. I mean, sometimes it's a problem, but I can still see the uh, grid that I initially laid down. And so, so sometimes I don't want to be able to see that, but it can just be helpful just to see it ever so faintly so I can continue this. 
Um, you know, it really is the same process if you're not using a grid. It just takes longer. You just um, you're still just looking at something and just observing, recording it. Just yeah, it takes a lot longer. See this line is quite subtle. If you just look very closely, so you can see the cheek where it just bulges out slightly, and then and that's this sort of form here. And it goes in, and then it comes out again, and then starts to then it forms, goes into the chin. So, you know, it's not just the um, just a straight line there. And again, just so beautifully observed by Rubens. So it's, it's just all, all cheek here, yeah. bulging out. Just trying to get a sense of that. You can see I'm just I'm taking the paint away, and I think that's something I'm just going to have to just add in. It's like a low light, you know, when you do highlights, you do low lights, and um, just to put the nostril in, I'll just wait until it's dry. Uh, but that just that's helped it a bit, uh, just around here. And there's a shadow that just carries on.
I can see various bits where it's, you know the eye is quite not quite right. The um, the iris and the cornea just needs to they need resolving. But I'm going to wait until it's dry for that. And I think I'm just going to leave it there. It's just to sort of give you an idea of the process that I would sort of continue on. And uh, but it's around now. I would stop. That's fine. I'll try and um, just off camera. I'll just uh, give this a glaze so it's dark. And then we'll come back to it with the uh, first colour glazes. Um, so I hope that I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, please uh, feedback if there's anything you'd like me to focus on specifically in these videos. Okay, so this is where I left it, and you can see it just next to the original. And honestly, I know it's not pretty, but I was generally pretty happy with the drawing at first when I saw it next to the line up against the original. I was a bit shocked. But I, I still think the um, ingredients are there, the foundation's there for further work and the drawing is closer than it might appear. So I should be able to make good uh, with a few adjustments just here and there. Uh, it's just very interesting. I mean, maybe you could see some things that uh, you would change, but this is also a technique I would use. You know, if I was painting a portrait, I might sort of... Uh, I've got a little app on my phone where you can sort of snap a photo, you know, two different photos uh, alongside each other and then you can just uh, look quite carefully at the differences. So uh, looking at it now, um, it's her right cheek, it's on our left as we look at it, but just uh, it's definitely bulging out a little bit more, isn't it? And uh, her, the jawline's not quite right, so uh, there's just so many things, you know, definitely the eyes are just, they're not way off. But because uh, you can see, you know, within the mess, all the smudging around I've made, within that, it's, it's quite close to the original. Uh, certainly to a point where I feel I can work with that. And this would be a typical process that I'd undergo. It's very, so valuable to just sort of walk out the room, don't look at the painting for a little bit, and then you come back and then you could just see it. That's what happened to me. I was just... I was all full of it and I thought everything was going really well and suddenly came back in and it was just uh, it was quite shocking. I just thought, oh gosh, that's not right. But then um, looking again at this, I can just see it should be just the little tweaks. So uh, we'll try and get those right in the next video. And most importantly, it's going to be dry then. So we can just oil out all over again and just go through the same process. And I'm sure we'll be able to arrive at something anyway that looks vaguely like the original.